If you go through the initial articles of the Framework Convention, you see many things that relate to a much broader agenda on sustainable development, on food security, on biodiversity, on the protection of ecosystems, and on the, on the preservation of sustainable economic growth. I think we lost our focus for that part of the agenda a little bit in our shifts of attention to the Kyoto Protocol. And what the Bali Roadmap has really represented is an opportunity to return to that much broader agenda. I believe that it is really important that we capitalize on that here in Copenhagen, that we make sure that the discussion here is about more than just a larger group of countries taking targets, but that we use this conference to get back to that much broader sustainable development agenda, which really was the inspiration of Rio in 1992. We can do that successfully through many of the things which politicians will focus on. The politicians will focus on the targets, the politicians will focus on the finance, the politicians will focus on monitoring, reporting and verification, making sure that, that international competitors are part of this agreement in an, in an equal way. What the politicians, I think, will not focus on are the things that will actually ensure that a Copenhagen agreed outcome delivers in a credible way. How will we actually create the architecture on adaptation, mitigation, technology, finance, capacity building, and your stuff, reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation in developing countries or Red Plus? That will not get the attention of world leaders, but it is, I believe, the foundation of an outcome of Copenhagen that makes sense in environmental terms, in ecological terms, and in economic terms, if you, if you talk about the kind of communities that you referred to uh, in, in your introduction. So while the spotlight is focused on the big political issues, we have to make sure, actually you have to make sure, that we deliver out of Copenhagen also the architecture that is environmentally, ecologically, economically, and socially sound as a result for when that spotlight inevitably shifts elsewhere. I have seen you do incredibly important work um, over the years that I've been in my job in terms of coming to a responsible way of dealing with deforestation, forest degradation, forest conservation as part of a climate change response that is not just a climate change response but that tries to link that climate change response to other critical areas like the preservation of biodiversity, like the preservation of the interests of indigenous peoples, a sound way forward. And what I would really encourage you to do in the remaining week of Copenhagen is to make sure that you safeguard the nitty gritty that while the focus of the politicians is on the big ticket issues, you make sure that the people that are beavering away, uh, I think beavers are not that good for trees, are they? No. <laughs> okay. That while people are working away um, in, the, in the individual contract groups, that you keep them focused on the environmental integrity, on the ecological integrity, and on the protection of the rights of people. Because while Copenhagen must be resounding in terms of its political outcome, while Copenhagen must be resounding in terms of providing an answer to the challenge that the scientific community has posed, 
That resoundingness relies on the integrity of what is ultimately agreed here. That result relies on the integrity of the architecture that is put in place here. So don't be blinded by the spotlights, but continue, please, to be the conscious of this process. Thank you.